now to uh, the next discussion, and it's about the international community expressing concern over the wave of military coups in Africa with the latest development in Gabon. And with the Central African country now, the number of countries in Africa under military rule in the last two years has jumped to seven. The others are, of course, Guinea, Mali, Burkina Faso, Chad, Sudan, and Niger. The ousted Gabonese president, Ali Bogo, was said to have been in power since the death of the former president, his father, in 2009, who happened, of course, to be from the Bongo clan, and he was said to have ruled for more than 50 years. And as the embattled president, Bongo, cried out for help, the Gabo coup elicited immediate reactions from President Bola Tinubu of Nigeria, as well as the United Nations, the European Union, African Union as well, and the Commonwealth. Other bodies that reacted, of course, include the United States of America, Russia, and France, and they all condemned uh, the ouster of President Bongo. Many analysts and experts have also said there is a need to re-examine the challenges to democratic governance in that region and how best to advance democracy amid the growing trend of coups. And that's what we will be treating head on at this leg of TVC Breakfast Monday edition. With me in the studio is public affairs commentator Adini Yikunu. We also have global affairs analyst Chooks Woko. Gentlemen, Mr. Woko and Mr. Kunu, it's good to have you both once Thank again on, on the show. Thank, Thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Let, let me begin with um, with you, Chuksuoko, I know you both have spoken extensively on what was the latest coup development in Niger, and now we're here to talk about yet another uh, manifestation, so to speak, in Gabon. Now, away from the West African region, but, you know, how does it meet you? Are you surprised? And if, if, you, if you can weigh both scenarios, what stands out for you in the Gabon example or the Gabon case? Like I said, I have spoken extensively concerning um, the, the situation, and I am not really comfortable with the caption as it were, but why? Why did it happen? I talked about the tipping point, that we are soon going to attain a tipping point, and it looks like we are almost there. So it's a question of being very careful for me. What I said is exactly what has happened. So. Here on this occasion, who is next? What country is next? Because we are not really addressing the why. We are not addressing the why these things are happening. And so for any country that doesn't want it to happen, like, for instance, uh, in Nigeria, we don't want it to happen in Nigeria. So what we must do is not to distract the current president mm -hmm. so they can provide the needed leadership, show compassion to the people, serve for four years or eight years, as the case may be, and evacuate the place. Why did it happen? You already said it all. How can a family take a people, 2.5, 2.3 million people hostage for 50 years, even if they are animals? Now, what has come out of it is that it must end, no matter how good a situation is, it will always have an end. The Bongo family has just come to an end. So all these international communities that are getting involved in what is going on in Africa. First, they don't understand that our mentality is different. They say things that they say, and I worry about democracy in Africa, how it's been trunc uh, truncated, and all the things that they are saying. What they don't understand, they also have their mentality. I have said it sufficiently here in this studio, that we are Africans. The black man has a mentality. We have lived here before this we intruded in our culture, intruded in our way of life. With this thing that they call democracy, I don't have a problem with it. What I have said is that the black man must sit down and ask why. You must learn it by force now to ask why. Why are we doing what we're doing and why are we doing the way we're doing it? We must modify, I have suggested that we must modify our democracy to be all-inclusive. These people in Gabon, this Bongo family, have taken a, a, a small group of people with all their resources, held them down, placed a hegemony upon them, and a change has occurred and people are crying. I don't understand it. What I think that they should do is find out what will work for us. We must find what works for us. The black man's mentality must be renewed. He must, he must ask questions. And he must start with why, what, 
How? So we don't keep repeating ourselves because no matter, look, we had COVID. It tipped. And every time you have a pandemic, every time you have a flu, every time you have an outbreak of cholera or any disease for that matter, after a while, it will tip. It will, there will be a decline. The way we have been governed here with this democracy hasn't paid because there's so much recklessness by, recklessness by our leaders. They don't care. They are deaf. They can't hear. They can't, they can't see. So for me, we have it. We have a situation here in Nigeria, an example to draw from what is going on and from what I'm saying. I think that we need to pay attention. We should not be distracted. Our president should not be distracted. His team should not be distracted. They need to recognize that there is been for a long time an effort to revamp our economy. It's not working. They brought all professionals from World Bank, from everywhere. It's not working. The solution is showing compassion to the people so that you can prosper. You cannot be paying people um, peanuts and think that, how are they going to survive? So the issue of Gabon is a very good example. It provides an opportunity to ask all the questions. Start with why, what, how. All right, Mr. Nwoko, we will soon go on a break. I just want to lay your uh, you know, position with that of Mr. Kuno. So having listened to uh, Chuk Nwoko there, uh, looking at the case in Gabon, how does it strike you, you know, in terms of similarities and differences and above all, the message that Africa and, uh, and indeed the world, you know, what we should uh, be running with at this time? I think a um, lot of people are in cahoots and that is why this kind of despotic uh, rulership has thrived in Africa. Uh, the African Union was, you know, uh, founded 1963. Between the 50s and the 90s, we had 84 successful coups on the African continent. There's supposedly a body that should have actually been able to speak to the incidences of coups to prevent it. If the African Union that was birthed, uh, for instance, Organization of African Unity, 1963, the African Union was, you know, founded in 2001, launched 2002, between all these periods that I've mentioned, there have been succession of coups. If these groups, so to speak, are groups created to ensure that there's unity on the continent, this would have been prevented. Because at times, when something negative keeps happening, and certain groups form to prevent it speak, it should have actually succeeded. But the group do not. The um, ECOWAS group was founded in 1975. Between 75 and this time, we continuously have coups, especially this part of Africa. It means that the negativities consequent upon coups that have happened have not actually had certain levels of resolute people that are able to say no to it. Now, let me give you a picture. We're talking about West Africa. In Togo, that's what we're talking about. Nasingbe Yadema was there 39 years. ECOWAS went deaf and dumb for all those periods of time. The son took over and wanted to just continue in office before President Olusha Gwamba so just said, nah, no, they conducted a sham election. It's still there. Now, Equas has not said anything. Mm -hmm. Go to Chad Republic. Mahatma Derby has been there and killings have continued unabated. But listen to me carefully. The international community has continuously related in terms of getting mineral resources from this country that are troubled and continuously deal with despotic leaders and don't see anything, so far that their interest is not affected. Listen, in Niger, there's a company called Orano. It's into farming as well as uranium mining. Excuse me, ma, children work in those mines. Nobody in ECHO has said, you can't be doing child labor. The same France that owns this uranium mine and the farms just kept quiet as if not time. And no leader in Africa said that. Go to Eritrea. ECS Afeki, 23 years. The killings in Eritrea has also resonated even in Tel Aviv as I'm speaking with you right now in this studio. Nobody's speaking to that. Now, Kagame has been applauded 24 years. I'm simply saying that this kind of things happening should not be happening on the continent. Moko was talking about the mentality of African. Why are both of us not thinking right? We well would have chosen the other path. All right, let me put a pause yes, on, on, on this leg of our discussions. We'll come back to more uh, on uh, discussions here on TVC Breakfast. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.
Thank you very much. And we have been speaking, uh, you know, so far in the last couple of minutes about the development in the nation, the Central African nation of Gabo here in Africa. Chukson Woko and Adini Ikunu have been uh, with us in the studio to share insights on um, this latest coup uh, emanating from uh, the uh, the Central African nation of Gabon. And earlier, uh, Mr. Kunu was talking about, um, will I call it the sincerity on the part of uh, world leaders to the coups in Africa and um, what you feel President Bola Tinobu, especially as a leader of the West African region, uh, sub-region, what you expect President Tinobu to be doing at this time? Sincerely, I don't want him to be caught up in all of this because we have enough problem. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern is we're in excess of 200 million, and there are lots of things that are not happening. Okay, at the birth of his administration, there's a model in Britain uh, with which they want to steer the economy of this country. And I've spoken on public fora that we cannot continue to use recommendations from Oxford and Cambridge and Harvard and Boston to resolve our problems. Umoko said it right when he talked about evolving a system that works for us in this part of the world. Uh, if you really study democracies, particularly in Asia, uh, between 1960 and the year 2000, you'd understand that the evolution of the likes of China, the, one of the biggest Asian tigers, as it were, was as a result of homegrown solutions to their problem. China, as of 60, 70, was a country devastated by poverty. But you see, following the, I think it was uh, Jinping and Mao Zedong, that evolved systems that, you know, Chi Jinping at the moment is actually latching onto that has helped them. I'm saying that President Bola Ametinubu doesn't need to allow himself to be dragged into such problems. Let's look at some other issues happening now. Only recently, the daughter of, the daughter of um, Ali Bongo was found with a million dollars cash in the U.S. It cannot be explained how she got it. She doesn't do anything for a living. If you come to even Africa, let's go to Egypt. Why I have also said that the West cannot be exonerated from this is that the things that are not happening and that the West will not allow to happen in their country, they look away as long as the things they get from Africa is not disturbed. Oshni Mubarak moved from being a military ruler to becoming somebody who never held election to the Arab Spring that ousted him from office. Egypt happens to be the biggest Arab country. The U.S. gave him money every year because of the peninsula and the Middle East. But look away from the fact that he was a despotic leader. Now, Mohammed Morsi came in, Egyptians themselves removed him, not the West. Why? Because he wanted to be a fundamentalist. Now you have an LSC that moved from becoming an army general at night to becoming a supposedly democratic leader in the morning. Now, nobody in AU is speaking to this issue. And it's a keg of gunpowder lit and gradually waiting for its explosion. I'm simply saying here, that President Bola Metunubu has too much on his table. In fact, Nigeria is a no problem for him to solve for the next four years. The best they could do is to deploy the best of diplomacy to the... Algeria has said it, because Algeria borders Niger to the north, that you cannot do that. Listen, Alassane Ouattara, for instance, wanted military incursion. Alassane Ouattara, since 2010, has done anything. If you appoint anybody, the person dies. Nobody is talking about that. So I think that we've come to a place where the Gabon example is an example that is at the nooks and cranny of this country. And we must come to a point of conscientization where we deploy the best of our resources to be able to mediate and solve this problem. And Africa must speak as one. Because at times when they even condemn military, I ask the question, are military officers spiritual beings? The only difference is that they put on uniforms, indicative of their job. They go to the same market to go to pay the same tuition for their children in schools, get into the same transportation systems as ourselves. So people should begin to have a relook at these issues before we condemn. Let us look at the things that continue to prompt these issues because we are being affected daily by all this. But uh, Mr. Woko, does it seem to you, as some have said, uh, the opposition in Gabo, for example, has said, People need to be cautious about this um, move by the military because General Nguema 
uh, who spearheaded the coup in Gabon is said to be a product uh, of the, the Bongo uh, family, dynasty. a member of the family. Uh, right, so to speak. And, you know, perhaps the people are speculating on, on his motive, perhaps to, you know, further strangulate the people or maybe to reinforce the, the stronghold of the, Bongo, so the, the Bongo clan. So, you know, where does this stand in, in your arguments for, you know, Africa? They, like you said, they are, just, they are just mere arguments. The Ali Bongo has come to an end, and this fellow is just starting. So let's, let's see what he wants to do. He has made a promise that a transition is going to commence soon. So he is a citizen of the country. He probably the, one, the only one that has proximity and as a member of the family had access to do what he did to remove this man. So maybe somebody is going to remove him eventually. But I think that the answer and the solution I have preferred here is that we must find what works for us. For instance, our own president must hear this. We must make our democracy, since that's what we have chosen, to be all-inclusive. We must nigerianize our democracy. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you first I'm need following. to understand what I'm, I'm saying. I'm you are following, following you. I'm, I'm following it's, you. It's, it's, we've been excluded in our own democracy. I have also suggested that we must do away with our National Assembly. So let's leave them in Congo, in Gabon, to find a solution. Let's give this young man some time. He, he shared the same space. He has proximity to the Bongo family. I hear they are related. How did I hear that they are related? Is this international uh, media that we are all listening to and getting this information? I believe that they are correct. But we must not allow us, we must, we must not allow this Western hegemony to constantly consume us. We must begin to renew our mind. I understand how we have lived here in the 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, that it's nothing to write home again. But we are civilized now. We have very brilliant minds in Africa. We have brilliant, intelligent people in the ministries, in all the uh, ministries and uh, public offices. Brilliant. Let's come together and fashion out what works for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, the Gabon situation has become a microcosm. It has become a mirror that we must look at because we are not suffering from this is disease that allows you to look at the mirror and you don't recognize yourself. We must recognize ourselves. We must ask questions. At least ask, if not many questions, but ask one question. Why? Why is these things happening? I think that it's happening because we have attained a tipping point where, where we conduct symbolic some, some elections. I mean, the, watch what happened in, 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 Gam, in Gabon election. Watch what happened in, 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 in Uganda not too long ago. Watch what happened in Zimbabwe very recently. I think that we must change our mentality by renewing our minds. Begin to tell ourselves that we're a people. We're a United States of Africa. We're United States of, of, of Nigeria. We must find what suits us. We have lived here many, many years, many centuries before these people came here, before our elites went abroad and brought this thing without looking at it and, and find what fits us. Now we are all divided and polarized like, like, like some, some places in the West. This thing we are practicing has polarized families, has polarized us. We no longer live um, the way we used to live. I mean, I agree that in the past, the, the black man has this attitude of setting fire in communities and burning houses and selling ourselves to slavery. But we've gone past that now. We must wear our thinking cap. We have, look, if you were in the PDP of the 1980, 98, 99, and up to very recently, the, that political party had a, had, had a collection of the brightest minds in the whole of the world. We can bring that back because those guys are still around. Do you understand? Instead of channeling those abilities to rigging the election and perverting uh, all these things, we must bring them to the table and say, fashion out what works. I have made a suggestion. The National Assembly, we can't afford it. Let's create a body of 50 individuals who can make laws and supervise agencies. It's just a suggestion by what do I know. But that's a suggestion. Let us allow the Gabon people to, 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 to exist, to breathe, to organize themselves because the individuals themselves that, that are wearing uniform that have taken over, they are citizens of that country. And by the way, how many are they? The people who are not up to a community in Taraba State or in, in, in Delta State. Two point something million people. They are in abject poverty. You can't build houses for all of them. And, and, and they have, the family has, a, 
has held these people hostage, held the economy hostage, and become a parasite on the system, it, we, they can't continue. So let's allow them to, to do what they want to do because they love their country more than we outsiders do. And concentrate here and minimize this, these suggestions and find a way to support our government. First, we need to be patient with our own government because they started well. They are making all the policy uh, statements and they are having crisis. So there are negotiations going on with government and labor. Um, you know, salaries cannot carry people home. So let them work out these things. Cut cost. All these arguments is what we have here. If we leave it and begin to carry other people, then distract this president. It will be very unfortunate for us. All right. I want uh, Mr. Kono to also respond mm -hmm. to, to this. Now, should the Gabonese people be cautious at this point, especially as to the motive of General Nguema's uh, intervention? Well, I, I think for somebody who is um, Ali Bongo's cousin, because that's actually the family connection between him and Bryce and Gema, um, Maybe he feels that they've been having discussions that come. Your health in the first place. Don't forget he has suffered a stroke before they went into the election. And it became shocking when the result came out and eventually assumed a power. So there probably had been certain discussions regarding relinquishing power or actually looking for alternatives to succeed him so that people will not say these are the things that continue. Your father has done it. You don't necessarily have to do the same thing. But I want to differ from Mwoko with regard to just leaving Gabon alone. I've said that the problems of Africa, that particularly in Nigeria, is very much, and that the president must not allow himself to be distracted. But we cannot just leave Gabon alone. The Arab Spring has accounted for the increments in the number of insurgency cases that we have on the African continent. And that's a fact of the matter. What I'm saying here is that when certain problems happen, for instance, we're talking about the influx of migrants to Europe, Excuse me, Europe was almost turned downside up, especially at the height of that migration. And it means that nobody can be left just alone with their problems. If you look at the, the succession of coups, just from one place, in Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, you have Gabon. Why? Because certain persons were disgruntled, certain persons were unhappy. So you have to find a way to also prevent it from continuing. But of course, you have to earn the right to do that. Mark yourself. Two terms wanted to actually obtain the constitution to go for a third term. Uh, Senegal is in problem now because of that. So I think it begins from the point where those who are supposedly democratic leaders are able to say no to turn your extension, such as we have in Uganda. You worry Museveni influence the parliament to do that so that he will remain in power. And if you check, many people are not looking at these guys. You worry Museveni was in the army. He converted. Kagame in the army. He converted. Many persons like that, they are quick to forget. So I think that when we talk about the issue of Africa and finding solutions, even talking about Nigeria that is a big brother in Africa, we have to find a way where we as a country that has been able to maintain the position and, you know, unfaltered democratic process for the past 20 years, I would say we have been in democracy. You people can learn from us so that we can have a continent that works for us. It's All important. Right.